I first heard about ice painting in a watercolor class that I'm taking through the local community college. One of the other students brought in some samples and talked about how she did it. Since we've been having some temperatures well below freezing, I decided to try it out. And this video is a record of my two days of experimenting with the techniques, different papers, and different paints. At the end, I've also provided a list of the, some of the materials that I used, so if you want to try this yourself, you certainly can. I'll also post a list underneath the video so that you can see it easily. Okay, call me crazy, but the sun is shining, and even though it's 12 degrees, the sun is shining, and I am going to try ice painting. I'm all set up. I have my watercolor paper taped down my bottle of water, a brush, and some liquid watercolors. So we'll see how it goes. All right, first step, I'm going to spray my paper and get it nice and wet, and hopefully it won't freeze. And then I'm gonna to have to set the camera down and do the next step because I have no way to prop my camera up. And this is the first one that I was doing. It's already starting to freeze, and you can see all the crystals starting to form. It's really awesome. And this one I'm doing, I just used a spray bottle with some watered-down blue liquid watercolor paint. So right now it's just been sprayed with blue, and I'm going to add some dabs of it. some blue and some purple. I just shook the watercolors right out of the bottle onto my paper. And here are the first two attempts at ice painting that I did on day one. These are how they look as dry finished pieces. Now that I've had a little experience with ice painting, I think I'm going to work more towards controlling my colors. So rather than using the straight out of the bottle Sargent Art liquid watercolors, I have some student grade tube watercolors. These are Academy, Grumbacher Academy. So they're relatively inexpensive. And what I've done is squirted some into these little egg cartons and then I've added water. So I put, you know, healthy squirt in the bottom, kind of enough to fill the bottom. And then I added water to bring it up and I'm stirring them up. So this one right here is cadmium yellow medium. So I have a little cadmium yellow medium here. And I'm making them fairly saturated. Um, the second one here, it's called light red hue, which to me looks like almost more of a sepia, kind of an orangey, an orangey hue. But I like that. It's kind of a nice color there. And this one down here is some sap green. Stir that one up. Got a little bit of plastic in there from the carton. In the middle here, I have I'm using, I want to test these acrylic inks. I only have two colors. I have black, which is here, and I took about three droppers, about that big, of black and put it in there and then added the water. And this one here that looks a little drained um, is uh, sepia. Unfortunately, I didn't know that there was a little puncture in that egg carton piece. So that one I'm gonna re refill before I take it outside to work. This color right here is raw umber, I think. Yeah, that's my raw umber. Reminds me of coffee with cream, which could be interesting. This one here is the turquoise. It's a nice, rich, deep blue color. And my last one over here is indigo. A color that I really like when I'm creating grays. Um, add a little red to that and you can get some beautiful gray tones. Now I'm gonna do a little bit of another to another one of these sepia inks. This may have, it has stopped flowing out, so I'm thinking it may have actually sealed itself up. 
but rather than find myself outside with no paint, I'm going to go ahead and mix up a little bit more. And I'm going to try some different papers today as well. But there's my palette with my colors. Yesterday, I used this Strathmore watercolor paper. It's cold press, 140 pound, um, 11 by 15 inch sheets. And I was using um, liquid watercolors called Watercolor Magic. This one here, I wet the paper and use the three primary colors and just let them flow together on their own without a lot of brushwork. And then this one here, I diluted some blue in a spray bottle and sprayed the paper first, then just dotted, squeezed right out of the bottle, some purple and blue, and then oversprayed it with some more of the blue um, in order to create this effect. And I found that the, uh, the effect of the crystallizing of the ice really wasn't as pronounced in this one, although where it did occur, it's really very pretty. So today I thought I would try some different papers along with my different paints. I have a Canson watercolor pad here. This is also 140 pound cold press, uh, some nine by 12, and it's very smooth compared to what I was using yesterday. And then I also have some Strathmore Bristol board, uh, which has a very smooth surface. Um, it's a 9 by 12, 100 pounds, so it's a little bit thinner. And I have been told and I have seen that if you have a smoother paper, you might get a different kind of crystal formation. So I'll be taking this outside and we'll see what we get. All right, I'm outdoors and ready to go with my first one. I'm going to cover up my fingers for a minute. This one, I'm just going to use the sepia acrylic ink because I really would like to see what that's going to do um, when it freezes. So I'm going to begin with water and I'm going to wet my paper really well. And for this one, I'm going to use a large brush to brush the color on. So I'm going to take the sepia and just brush it onto my paper so that I can see what this will do to create a toned, perhaps a toned background for another piece of artwork. And I'm using the Canson watercolor paper I'm working on the smoother side of the paper. You'll often find with watercolor paper, one side is a little smoother than the other. So I'm working with the smooth side on this one. And I'm just going to test the sepia acrylic ink. And I'm going to go back inside because my brushes and I are going to freeze really quickly. Here are a few close-ups of the dried end results from my sepia on the Canson watercolor paper. I was really pleased to see all the pretty feathery crystals that formed and remained as it dried. In the interest of making this somewhat scientific experiment, this is the Bristol vellum paper. I'm going to use the same technique and the same color, the sepia acrylic ink. So I'm going to spray the Bristol vellum paper, get it nice and wet, and I'm going to use my big brush and go back to the sepia acrylic ink. I'm already seeing some really neat effects here. And run back inside and warm up. Okay, here are some close-ups from my second experiment with the diluted sepia ink. 
The vellum paper is a much smoother paper, so I did get some beautiful feathery crystals, but I also got large areas that to me more resemble a sandy shore or sandy beach. All in all, very nice. My attempt to repeat this experiment with the black ink was not as successful. Um, I, it seemed to just not want to crystallize at all, and I don't know if that was because the ink was thicker or maybe I didn't dilute it as much. So I decided to take a piece of Strathmore brand mixed media paper, which is a vellum surface and fairly smooth, wet it thoroughly, and I used both the sepia and the black, although I diluted the black a whole lot more. And I got these very interesting grainy textures, although I still didn't get real satisfactory crystals like I had with the sepia. Okay, I feel like I've given the inks their fair shot. So it's time to use the paints. And these are the regular tube watercolors that I've watered down a little bit. So I'm going to spray my paper. It's a little bit of a wind today, so things are freezing quickly. So I may find that I have to re-wet frequently. I'm going to start with my lightest color. So I'm going to use my yellow. And I'm going to use a brush for this one. of yellow. Rinse my brush and some water over to the side to do a little rinsing. And I'm going to switch off to my, my red, which was really pretty. It's a very, very vibrant orangey red. And with this one, I'm going to add a little bit of the turquoise, just in a few spots along the edges of things. And I'm already seeing some really nice mixing going on here in the middle. I'm going to turn my camera to give you a full view here. There we go. And I'm going to, then yeah, now I'm going to just spray. Just get that water going. Get some flow to the colors. Everything is freezing very quickly. It's only 10 degrees here where I'm working. So I'm getting a lot of quick, quick freezing with my water. freezing really fast. Doing some very fast freezing here. I think I'm going to open up my bottle and I'm going to do a little more water here. See if that impacts the crystal formation at all. Do a little bit along these edges. I know it's giving that turquoise a much more vibrant look. Not too crazy about this little corner here where it got very dark, but it might end up okay. Right, I'm going to let that do its freezy thing. And here are some results from that experiment. I got a lot of really nice color blending and some very, very fine crystals. You have to look very closely to see them. I'm not sure what the difference was. The temperature had remained the same. It could be paper, could be paint, could be application. With this one, I pre-wet the paper in the house so that it would have a little time to saturate well. 
Um, oh, I didn't mean to spill that on there, but I guess it's staying. I'm going to try this one just doing a wash of some colors. I guess since I have that orangey red here, I'll start with that. And I'm wiping my brush off in the snow for lack of any other way to clean it. I suppose that works. I'm using it. <laughs> and uh, I think I'm going to bring this in. how this is going to work. Alright, and then I'm going to do the spray. Get some flour going in here. paper a little bit. see some freezing starting to take effect down in here. I'm going to let this go and see what it does. Here's one that was done with a lot more sunshine on my paper, which may have had an impact and maybe caused some slight warming. I did get some nice gradations in color and a little bit of crystallization, and I think this will become useful as the basis of a future painting. I also went on and did a few other projects that same afternoon. This one was done with yellow and blue and I simply splashed the paint on with my brush onto the wet paper. Got some really neat images around the blue, especially. This one was done on illustration board, so very, very fine, smooth surface, and I only used some red and a very small amount of green, very watered down in the background, but got some really nice feathery effects. This here is showing the actual freezing process, um, this one I had the blue and the red and a little strip of purple and I took photos as it was going through the freezing process. Then this is what it actually looked like when it was dry. You can see that the colors lighten considerably but some of the crystal formations do remain. So all in all this was a lot of fun. Two days of being out in the cold but enjoying every minute. I'm providing a list of some of the materials that I experimented with, and I'll also post this list underneath the video in the comments section.